Any promoter worth their salt should always be on the lookout for up-and-coming stars they can replenish their current roster with. After all, no matter how good your product is, the talent is always going to be the lifeblood of the industry. And sure, WWE has been criticized for not building enough new stars over the last couple of decades. That said, with Triple H now running the show, it's meant a whole crop of young performers have been able to start their rise to the next level. But who are the biggest examples of this? Well, join us today as we take a deep dive into blue chippers, wrestlers with huge potential. And if we're going to start anywhere with this topic, where better to do so than with one of the most promising up-and-comers on the entire WWE roster today, and that's Solo Sokoa. Yes, it's hard to believe that only a year ago, Sokoa was still on the NXT 2.0 roster trying to prove himself as being deserving of the spot. But that's exactly what happened, and luckily, he didn't have to try hard to get the respect he deserved, because with him being a member of the Anawaii family, it all came pretty naturally. So when the Bloodline needed a new member to help Roman Reigns get a win over Drew McIntyre at the September 3rd, 2022 Clash at the Castle event then, it was this young rookie they looked to. And that turned out to be a great decision, as after costing Drew the victory that night, Solo quickly established himself as the silent heavy of the stable, one who no one dared mess with, lest they feel the wrath of his Samoan spike. Seriously, so feared did the Sacramento native become in such a short space of time, it felt like no one would ever be able to beat him. And that very intimidation was what helped him go on a seven-month-long winning streak, with his first loss not coming until Cody Rhodes managed to pin him on the Raw before WrestleMania 39. That said, such a loss didn't keep Sokoa down for long, because at the showcase of the Immortals just a few days later, he gets some measure of revenge by helping his tribal chief Roman Reigns to score the victory over the American Nightmare in the main event. And since this point, no one else has been able to get the better of him again, a fact which will likely continue to be true for some time to come. Hell, at this rate, with the bloodline just as strong as ever, we wouldn't be surprised if the rookie isn't tasked with going after some singles gold soon, whether that be in the form of Austin Theory's United States title or Gunther's Intercontinental Championship. But there's always the chance he might choose to just bypass this entirely and go straight after a larger prize instead, with that being the new World Heavyweight Championship. And if he were to win this one, we can only imagine the issues it might cause in the Bloodline's locker room, as the Tribal Chief has to be well aware his run on top can only last for so long, and that someone like Solo Sokoa ultimately represents the future of where WWE is going. That said, he's not the only person on the roster who represents the future of the company. No, someone we've mentioned here has also been pegged for big things in the years to come. Who are we talking about here? Why, Austin Theory, of course. Sure, he may have his detractors, but regardless of how you feel about him as a main event player, it's undeniable WWE see a lot in the Georgia native, as ever since his days on NXT, he's been presented as one to watch. After all, it was down on the black and gold brand that he first aligned himself with The Way and regularly proved to be an ace in the hole for the stable. Then, when he got his proper main roster call-up in 2021, he'd quickly be given a storyline where Vince McMahon took him on as his own personal protege. And while this storyline later had to be aborted, it just showed how much potential the boss saw in the rookie, as it's not very often he gives someone his own personal stamp of approval. So not wanting to waste this, Theory has since gone on to find main roster success by not only winning the 2022 Men's Money in the Bank ladder match, but also by later becoming a two-time United States champion as well. And with his second reign even seeing him score a pinfall victory over John Cena at WrestleMania 39, it seems the sky really is the limit for his future in the company. But what of the man he once called a leader? Surely he must have just as bright of a future ahead of him, too? Well, to that we say yes he does, because when you're talking about Johnny Gargano, how could it be any different? And sure, we know Johnny Wrestling isn't exactly a rookie. After all, he's long been a veteran of places like Pro Wrestling Gorilla, Evolve, and Chikara, just as he's already served a spell as the heart and soul of NXT. Hell, to this day, he probably has the best feud in the history of the black and gold brand alongside Tommaso Ciampa, but one place he hasn't been able to prove himself yet has been the main roster. Not that he should have any trouble doing this in time, though, as, still just 35 years old, Gargano is only now reaching his prime. And given how good he's been up until this point, it's scary to think how much better he might get. After less than a year on the main roster, in fact, he's already established himself with fans as a babyface to watch. 
after his feud with The Miz wasn't exactly the highlight of Triple H's run with the book, but at the very least, it's given him a chance to show he can make it on Raw if given the chance. And with him now firmly a main roster guy, who knows what the future will hold? Will he reignite his feud with Tommaso Ciampa? Or will he just move on from this entirely and instead decide to go after some singles gold? Given his skills in the ring, it really is up to him just how high he rises. We wouldn't even be surprised if over the next year or so, he gets to go after that new World Heavyweight title. That's as long as Vince McMahon doesn't veto things, of course, because as we know, smaller guys aren't exactly the boss's forte when it comes to who he likes to push. Still, he has been persuaded before, as was the case with Shawn Michaels in the 90s, someone who Gargano has often drawn comparisons to. So hopefully he'll be able to overcome this hurdle if it becomes necessary then. That said, one person who won't have to overcome such a hurdle is someone Johnny Wrestling has been closely associated with on Raw as of late, and that's the mountain of a man that is Bronson Reed. But then why would he? He checks every box WWE has ever wanted of a heel monster. After all, he's big, he's intimidating, and he can go in the ring. Sure, this latter fact may not have been as evident during his first run with New York between 2019 and 2021, where he never got beyond NXT. That said, anyone still saying this after seeing his run in New Japan Pro Wrestling needs to get their eyes checked, because there, not only was he a standout of the 2022 G1 Climax, but on top of that, he actually scored a clean pinfall victory over Kazuchika Okada. So with such a feather in his cap, it's no surprise that Triple H wanted him back once he took over creative control of WWE soon thereafter. And with him already having a pre-existing relationship with the Australian following their time working together on the black and gold brand, this made the whole process a lot easier, and meant that come December of that same year, Bronson Reed would be on Raw, kicking ass and taking names. And that's where he remains to this day, still mowing his way through the mid-card, patiently awaiting the chance to rise up the ladder further by winning some gold. When will he do this? If we had to guess, we'd say sooner rather than later, as given he's accomplished so much already elsewhere, there really is no time to waste building him up from scratch again. Now, we see secondary gold in his immediate future, probably before the year is out. And after that, who knows? Whether it's Triple H or Vince McMahon in charge, we don't imagine he'll be hurt by this either way. No, we wouldn't be surprised if he was challenging someone like Roman Reigns eventually and attempting to take the WWE Universal title away from him. Of course, he will have some people nipping at his heels throughout this period, however, as they each attempt to reach such a level too. And one of the foremost of these is Matt Riddle, because with him already having gotten his shot at the Tribal Chief once before and coming perilously close to beating him then, he must know if he gets the opportunity again, he could very well walk away with the big one. Yes, as a former MMA fighter, this Pennsylvania native can sleep easily at night knowing he's one of the shoot toughest men on the roster. Really, the only people we reckon could challenge him one-on-one -on -one would be Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley, or Chad Gable. And while this hasn't always translated well in terms of a big push for him in WWE, over the last couple of years, something has shifted as he now feels like a person who could be a world champion one day. Yes, he always had the potential to do this, but with him apparently pissing off some of the wrong people backstage, this made such an eventuality seem like it would be unlikely for a while. Ever since teaming with Randy Orton in mid-2021, though, it appears he's not only won over the right people, but he's also gained a whole new dimension to his character, one which has helped fans fall in love with him on a grander scale. So with all the pieces now slotting into place, Riddle really could be a future player on either the Raw or SmackDown brand. And that could mean winning a world title just as easily as it could mean doing what he's been telling us he'll one day do for years, and that's retire Brock Lesnar. Of course, this may seem like a big ambition as it currently stands, but someone is eventually going to have to put the beast down for good. And really, if you think about it, there are few, if any, with better legitimate credentials to believably be that person than Matt Riddle. But such a moment is likely still a ways away yet as Lesnar probably has years left ahead of him. And by the time he's ready to hang up his boots, another blue chipper will have probably reached his true form, as while he's still in the tag team division right now, the endgame for Montez Ford feels like him being a major singles star. Sure, it would be nice to have a team outside of the New Day or the Usos who remains a unit for their entire run, but sometimes, when someone has so much potential, you just have to bite the bullet and go with it. 
and Ford definitely has a lot of potential to him, something which can be seen each and every week as he comes out on Raw alongside his Street Profits tag team partner, Angelo Dawkins. Not that Dawkins isn't good too, however. No, he clearly has a lot to offer himself. But if you watch any of their matches, you can tell right away which one is the Shawn Michaels of the pair, and it's not the one from Ohio. Yes, not only does Montez Ford have both in-ring skills and bucket loads of charm to help him stand out, but he also has the fact that, with him being married to current Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair, he's part of a legitimate backstage power couple. So it would only make sense that once he finally does break away from Dawkins and move on to a singles career, he gets himself into a program with someone like Seth Rollins, as this would allow Bianca and Becky Lynch to also play a role. And if he earns a big-time win over someone as good as the architect in the process, it would really only be a matter of time before Ford reached a higher level again and went after the world title itself. We're not saying this is going to happen next month or anything, but given how obviously skilled he is, it feels like an inevitability that it will happen eventually. And when it does, WWE will have a true superstar on their hands because there aren't many people on the roster today who can do what he does with quite as much swagger. That said, it's taken Montez Ford years of training to get to this point, just as it is done for almost everyone else on the roster. For some lucky few, though, they just seem to take to the ring like a duck to water, as has been the case with Logan Paul. Yes, you simply can't deny that only five matches into his run now, he's proven he can hang with the best of them. Now, don't get us wrong, it's a lot easier to put on a good match when you have months to prepare and rehearse, so it's not as if he's Bret Hart or anything. But even with that said, what Logan has been able to achieve in such a short space of time is nothing short of amazing. After all, it takes two to tango, and the Ohio native has most certainly kept up the pace during his bouts against the likes of Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. In fact, if you didn't know any differently, you'd think he'd been doing this his whole life. So it's scary to think where he'll be in his 10th or even his 20th match. Maybe he'll win some gold at some point, something which would no doubt piss off a lot of fans, but which wouldn't be anywhere near the catastrophe something like David Arquette's world title run was in 2000. Hell, at this point, you could make a solid argument that he does a better buckshot lariat than Hangman Page, and that's the anxious millennial cowboy's own move. You could even argue that out of every celebrity to ever hit the ring, he's the one who's looks most like a real wrestler in the shortest space of time. But then given his history in the boxing ring, maybe none of this should have come as a surprise, because he's very clearly had plenty of athletic skill prior to ever signing a contract with WWE. And with him now realizing everyone wants to boo him and giving them what they want by turning heel, he seems primed to be a big player in New York for the foreseeable future, someone who could end up overshadowing some of his more experienced co-workers. That said, one person he'll have a hard time overshadowing completely is a man so good on the mic, he's able to overcome WWE's scripted promo style and sound like he's been picked straight out of the Attitude Era itself. Who are we talking about this time? Why, L.A. Knight, yeah, of course. Now, let me talk to you for a second. If you're not on the L.A. Knight train by now, you need to get on it as soon as possible because this guy has the verbal skills to talk himself right into a main event spot before long. And sure, at 40 years old, he might not be the youngest guy out there anymore, but that shouldn't be a mark against someone who's got this much charisma. Yes, with the charm of a cult leader and the shoes of a champion, there's no reason this Maryland native shouldn't rise high up the card. After all, he can still go in the ring, and age has done nothing to dampen his skills on the mic. No, it's only strengthened them, in fact, which was exactly why when he was saddled with the potential albatross of maximum male models upon his main roster debut, he managed to get it over and help it become one of the funniest gimmicks in wrestling today. And since then, he's only continued to excel with whatever he's been asked to do, whether that be by feuding with Bray Wyatt in early 2023, or by simply acting as a utility player who can be brought in to give someone a good match on SmackDown. So with him continuing to build up this trust with management and prove he's someone who can be relied upon, it feels like only a matter of time until they give him an angle he can really sink his teeth into, maybe one which will see him finally get to challenge for some gold. Of course, this wouldn't be the first time he's won gold, though, as while wrestling in both Impact and the NWA prior to his time in New York, he'd become a one-time world champion, two-time tag team champion, and one-time TNA King of the Mountain champion. So if there was any worry he wouldn't be able to handle the pressure of being given a top prize, this should squash that right away. 
Really then, WWE has no excuse to not just go with him as fans clearly want it and are ready to welcome him in with open arms. The only question that remains is, will he ultimately get the push he's been waiting for, or will it instead go to someone else on the SmackDown roster, someone who came back to the company in 2022, and that's Karrion Cross. Now we know the former NXT champion's first run on the main roster back in 2021 didn't go so well, but since then he's regained much of what made him stand out in the first place, and that's his entrance, his valet Scarlett Bordeaux, and a distinct lack of budget demolition gear. And while you can't exactly say he's lit the world on fire since he returned to SmackDown in 2022, he's certainly in much better standing now than he was back then, and he absolutely has all the necessary skills required to be a top guy in any Vince McMahon or Triple H-led promotion. After all, he's got the size, something which is usually a prerequisite for a main eventer in New York. And he has a certain aura to him, especially whenever Scarlett is by his side playing a modern-day Sable. So really, all he needs then is a big win with which to hang his hat on, something he's already started working his way toward with feuds against the likes of Drew McIntyre and Rey Mysterio. And when he does finally reach that next level, the rest of the roster is going to have to prepare themselves to fall and pray at his feet, because if his inevitable future world title run on the main roster goes anything like his world title run down on the black and gold brand, he'll be a dominating force right up until the point he decides not to be. As it stands right now, however, it's just a case of waiting on management to make their move. A move they better make soon, because if they play their cards right with Cross, they could have a modern-day Batista-like figure on their hands. One who will definitely catch the eye of people who happen to be channel surfing on a Friday night. But the New York native isn't the only person who might grab the attention of casual fans switching through stations at the weekend, because over in the women's division on the blue brand, another statuesque performer is filling a similar role, and that's Raquel Rodriguez. Yes, while the WWE women's division has certainly lost a step or two since the glory days of the four horsewomen a few years back, that's not to say they haven't been hard at work at building new stars. And with the likes of Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley now having reached the top of the mountain themselves, many eyes have turned to Rodriguez to see if she'll be the next person to step up. After all, she's got the exact kind of look the company wants in a top women's star. And she's already proven that she can go in the ring when push comes to shove. Hell, during her time in NXT, in fact, she did what no one else was able to do when she ended the 304-day title reign of the mighty Io Shirai, and in the process, became that brand's women's champion. But this wasn't the only thing the Texas native was doing down in developmental as, alongside Dakota Kai, she not only won the 2021 Women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, but she also became a two-time Women's Tag Team Champion too. And once she joined the main roster soon thereafter, she'd repeat this feat by winning the women's tag team titles there on two separate occasions, once with Aaliyah and once with Liv Morgan. In fact, as of the time of this video's recording, her run with Morgan is currently ongoing. That said, we're sure she still has eyes on main roster singles success, and given her drive to be the best then, we wouldn't be surprised to see her go after either the aforementioned Bel Air or Ripley in the near future. Of course, when she does this, there's a very good chance she'll be able to win one, if not both of these belts, proving that her potential really is limitless. But then, we could really say the same about everyone we've discussed today, because between them all, they represent the very bright future of the world of professional wrestling.